Who said death can't be funny? Or at least cringeworthy. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst acted movie deaths. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at scenes in otherwise serious movies where an actor's attempt at portraying death went over so badly that it pulled audiences out of the movie and possibly even had them laughing. Needless to say, a spoiler alert is in order. Everything will be all right. Good night, Johnny. Number 10, thank you. Mission Impossible 3. Lindsay, I'm gonna short out the explosive in your hand. You're gonna be okay. You don't need 30 seconds. Tension is hard to maintain, but cartoon sound effects don't exactly help. After rescuing Lindsay Ferris from a warehouse full of thugs, Ethan and the gang think they've seen the worst of their day. But when they realize Ferris has a tiny explosive in her brain, the tension ramps back up as they try to disarm it with a defibrillator. With emotions building to a climax, the scene has viewers' hearts sinking when Ferris gives Ethan a final thank you. Ethan, thank you. But with some bugged out eyes, a head whip, and some weird sound effects, Carrie Russell's death is more humorous than disturbing. <sighs> Number nine, why is this happening to me? The Room. Why, Lisa, why, why? <sighs> some people really need a director to tell them when to try another take. After discovering his girlfriend and best friend are having an affair, Johnny quickly becomes angry and depressed by their betrayal and starts feeling suicidal. But his sadness quickly turns to painful overacting as he screams, why? And it's over like an upset teenager and follows this up with his farewell. God. Forgive me. Somewhere between the over-the-top performance and slow-mo that follows, which is all highlighted by actor-director Tommy Wiseau prematurely lying back before the gun goes off, the whole scene looks more like a high school play than a feature film. Maybe this is why a lot of directors don't act in their own movies. Wake up, Johnny, come on! Is he dead? Number eight, not the bees, the wicker man. I'm not one of you! I don't believe in your God! While getting tortured to death is certainly a reason to scream, it's the sound of the scream that can push your audience to laughter. After being captured while looking for his daughter, Nicolas Cage is first tortured by having his legs broken. But what comes next is something he's really afraid of. After being subjected to a helmet of bees, his screams go from sensible to gargling to calling out where the bees are. Oh, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! <laughs> but what really makes this alternate ending scene over the top is when Cage realizes where he's going next. Oh my god! Oh my god! The absolute cherry on top, though, as the wicker man starts to burn, Cage's yelling suddenly turns into a siren-like wail that sounds more like it should be coming from his character's cop car than him. <laughs> Number seven, dying of a broken heart. Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. For reasons we can't explain, we are losing her. She's dying. The Force wasn't very strong with this one. While giving birth after Anakin Force chokes her out, Padme is on the brink of death, with barely enough life to bring her children into the world. Earlier in the scene, it's unclear if she's actually dying, as she doesn't seem to be in much pain. Instead, she looks exhausted and is somehow able to whip out names for her children without hesitation. It's a girl. But things truly fall apart when Natalie Portman closes her eyes and tries to proclaim that Anakin is still a good person, trailing off until she pulls the classic death head tilt. Not very convincing was she. There's good in him. I know. I know there's... Still. Number six. Prepare yourselves, the Dark Knight Rises. Folks showed me how to operate the reactor. Just cause you've won an Academy Award does not mean it all comes naturally. After the truck chase crashes to a halt, Talia Al Ghul is fatally injured in the wreckage. 
but she doesn't die before she gives a final villain monologue about her master plan. This includes her whispering her way through the speech before her eyes start to bug out. There's no way this bomb will be stopped. Marion Cotillard also makes what seems like a lot of unnecessary head movements until she finally closes her eyes. As great as she usually is, this is not exactly at the level of professional acting that you'd expect from an Oscar winner. My father's work is done. Number 5. Oh, Spider-Man. You've spun your last web, Spider-Man. It's surprising how much a few words can really change the tone of an entire scene. At the end of their climactic fight, Norman Osborn makes one last plea to Spider-Man's alter ego. Give me your hand. Believe in me, as I believed in you. When this doesn't work, Osborn's face goes crooked, and he dementedly grunts, Godspeed, Spider-Man, before his glider is launched toward him and Spider-Man. As Peter jumps out of the way, Willem Dafoe gives an out of place oh. before his movements go wooden. This is followed by a somewhat quirky delivery of his final words before he collapses in the most cartoonish way possible. Peter, don't tell Harry. <laughs> Number four, it had to be this way, the Wolfman. You're heir to my kingdom, Lawrence. You've always been heir to my kingdom. Not all transformations go as smoothly as others. After fighting another werewolf, Lawrence ends up chasing his lover Gwen until she musters up the strength to shoot him with a silver bullet. <laughs> After returning to human form, he wakes up and, with a blank stare, strangely whispers, it had to be this way. It's another entry with a bug-eyed look and a final thank you as well as that classic head tilt, after which the Wolfman goes limp in his lover's arms. Let's just say it's unlikely Benicio Del Toro will be putting this one in his showreel anytime soon. Thank you. Number three, Dad, The Godfather, part three. Dad, why are you doing this to me? After leaving the opera, Michael's daughter Mary keeps asking him awkwardly why he's ruining her relationship, stumbling through her lines in the process. Why are you, you don't have to do this to me, please. After being accidentally shot by an assassin who's attempting to kill Michael, Mary limps like she's injured her leg before suddenly seeming to notice she's actually been shot. Dad? Without demonstrating any pain on her face, Mary calls out for her father one last time before falling over to apparently instantly die in a scene that's only saved by Diane Keaton and Al Pacino's reactions. No! 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 no. Oh, God, no, please! <laughs> Number two, it was fun. Star Trek Generations. Did we do it? And make a difference. The iconic Captain Kirk is fatally wounded after being crushed while trying to help Captain Picard. While delivering his final monologue, actor William Shatner seems blissfully unaware of the pain, as his eyes seem to suggest he's delivering just any old line, even though the wounds he sustained are severe enough that he has blood dripping from his mouth. At least I could do. But the captain of the Enterprise. His smile then turns to shock, after which he destroys the emotion with an out of place oh my. that even George Takei would likely consider too much. The final death rattle? He turns his head to stare blankly at the camera. It was fun. Before we unveil our top pick, here is an honorable mention. Number one, ready for the big ride, face off. Every time you look in the mirror, you'll see my face. In the film's climactic showdown, caster Troy slices his face with glass while assuming Sean Archer's identity. Left without a choice, the body-swapped Archer kicks Troy and finally finishes him off with a harpoon and screams in his face. <laughs> If that doesn't sound ridiculous enough, the dying Troy switches back to his real voice while carrying Archer's face. 
The comically out-of-place callback in the voice of Nicolas Cage sees Troy repeating with his last breath, the ready-for-the-big-ride-baby line from earlier in the film. Ready, ready for the big ride. The strange whimper comes off as so goofy that it's helped the film become a cult classic. You okay, Archer? What did you call me? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.